On this episode, we talk to Doc AI about how they use federated learning to preserve privacy while training machine learning models. So going back to your application, you kind of mentioned that AI was used for the patients that are using it. Tell us a little bit more about the actual app. Yeah, so we have the Medical Research Companion app. Uh, and what it allows you to do is basically um, be able to collect some important omics information. And we have reduced the friction to be able to collect that. Like I mentioned earlier, you can take a medical selfie, which is just a selfie, but it extracts medical information out of that. We can extract mood and behavioral data out of that selfie. But we can also take pictures of your pill bottles and understand what medication and dosage and instructions that exist on those. We can do that pretty much for lab results and medical records uh, very soon. Uh, we can also collect your genetic uh, information. So we don't do wet sequencing, meaning that we don't get you sequenced, uh, but we can collect any of the raw data that you have uh, sequenced yourself, for example, from 23andMe or Ancestry, and be able to bring that into the app and keep it in the app, uh, and then understand what's in the data, right? So, uh, so one is it's all about polyomics data collection. Uh, that the app allows you to do. But on the other side, we basically run uh, what we call as data trials, which is the new version of what medical research looks like, where we can actually take users uh, vertically based on their disease or conditions and use the data they've collected so far to like lead them towards this research with the right consent and the right opt-ins uh, so that they can participate and get some rewards. Uh, the rewards could be financial, but it could also be more than that, like insights and other predictions that we can give on top of that. So uh, largely, it, the Medical Companion app is a medical research app that allows uh, patients to understand and see what are the newer ways that they can find solutions for their diseases today. How does the cloud kind of enable that collection and then, you know, actual yeah. using of that data? Right. Yeah. So we see that in many ways. So first of all, for some, something like medical selfie, which uh, is basically a deep learning model that we have built, uh, we have built it on the cloud uh, across a lot of data that we were able to collect uh, painstakingly through different techniques. Uh, so the medical selfie is a deep learning model that can take an image or a selfie of your face and be able to predict your sex, height, weight, and age as parameters out of that, but then also triage further predictions out of that. So now that's a model that we built on the cloud, uh, using on Google Cloud, using a lot of computational resources. Then we were able to convert that model to run on a mobile device. So we, we were able to take that and made it do edge inferences. So we can run it on a phone and it can actually predict those variables just sitting on the phone without really revealing or taking any of the images that the patient or the member is taking back to the server. So. Uh, so one thing that I see there is that uh, cloud enables us to like build models like this that today is much uh, harder to build just on the phone. But uh, with newer approaches like federated learning, we can actually also train and build models uh, on the phone across many, many, many users, like hundreds of thousands of users. So we may not need cloud uh, to even centralize the data in the, some point in future. So what exactly does federated learning enable for the users who are using the application? That's a great question. So I think healthcare data in general is a very valuable data asset. Um, and I think it's highly secure and private data that every user and every patient should actually care for. So we think the future of where all of the health information will exist is only on the edge, uh, specifically on the mobile phones for the users. Uh, and I think, it's easy for them to lose that information and send it to a cloud uh, if they're not aware of how the data is being used. So what we can do with federated learning now is provide guarantees for users that it can stay on the device, but then we don't lose the aspect of learning something from the data wherein we can now build models that can train on the device and we can build a better model on the server by just sort of sharing the device trained information, which is usually like bits of information, like numbers, but not the real data itself. And imagine now if we can do that across a population of users, like hundreds of thousands of users, then what we get 
behind the scenes is a much more robust model that's much more diverse and hopefully it's much more generalized than as if it was trained on a single user. So that's what uh, federated learning can do and then we can add layers of security and tools like differential privacy where we don't even learn anything about the person that we are training on. So in combination with differential privacy and federated learning, I think we have a very potent solution where we can keep the data on the edge and still be able to learn something from the data without knowing who the user is or what's in the data. Stay tuned for more conversations with Doc AI. If you enjoyed this episode, check out the Stack Chat playlist for more great videos.